start in Syria, with the retaking of Palmyra grabbing headlines around the world, and particularly after cameras revealed the true extent of the devastation Islamic State wreaked on the city's ancient ruins. Many of its most precious relics were plundered by ISIL and have been turning up in auction houses worldwide. An RT documentary crew, which has previously reported on ISIL's oil trade, has now obtained exclusive documents claiming to show that ISIL may have smuggled the looted antiquities into Turkey. For safety reasons, we have disguised the identity of the reporter. We are an RT documentary crew who have recently come back from the Syrian town of Shadadi, which was liberated from ISIL. Last time, we spoke about the documents that we found there. The story went public, and after some time, the representatives of the Kurdish People's Protection Units, or the YPG, with whom we filmed there, sent us some additional documents. One of the new documents is a note that has the same letterhead of ISIL's Ministry of Natural Resources as the oil bills of sale, which we discussed last time. You can see them here. However, now this is a different department, not one that deals with oil, but one that deals with artifacts. Here it says, To brother responsible for the border, ask you to provide assistance in crossing for brother Hussein Haniya Sarira and the man from Turkey, who is artifact seller, so that they could cooperate with us in the Department of Artifacts at the Ministry of Natural Resources. The most interesting thing here is that this note supports the previous theories that ISIL sells artifacts using the same trade route, which, as we were told, is used to bring across weapons and supplies. While on assignment in Shaddadi, we came across archaeological pieces discovered by the Kurdish YPG abandoned in a tunnel, which ISIL fighters fled through. And here you can see pieces of various ceramical pots, and neither we nor the YPG fighters knew how ancient they are, but at the same place they also found an old map in French, perhaps from the colonial times, which indicates the excavation grounds. Also, we've received operational footage with a captured fighter who was apprehended by the YPG at the same time as we were filming in Shadadi. They sent me to serve in Tel Abyad in Syria on the Turkish border. Sometimes we even crossed the Turkish border and served there. We saw the Turkish army passing by, but there was never any kind of conflict between us. This militant and his group attacked the Kurds at the border town of Tel Abyad, which was formerly a trade corridor between Turkey and ISIL. The city was completely liberated and is controlled by the Kurdish YPG since July 2015. When the Kurdish militia took over Tel Abyad, the connection was lost and foreign fighters could not get in. The communication with the Turkish security services was broken. We could only communicate via civilians or spies. The goods that came from Turkey have also disappeared because the Kurdish YPG fighters have blocked the road through Tel Abyad. Also, the tankers can't drive through the area. That has put the organization in a complicated financial situation. He told us that ISIL depends heavily on the oil trade and also mentioned the salaries that he and others like him received. We, Daesh, know that we financially depend on oil. Earlier it was said we only sold to civilian buyers, but there's no way they could buy so much. Our wages are from 50 to 100 dollars, depending on whether you're married or not. I'm married and have a baby, so I was paid 135 dollars. When the oil supplier crossed Tel Abyad was cut off, the problem started. This is just a part of the unique materials which will be shown in a documentary on RT at the end of April. Stay tuned.